everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to do a playthrough of Dirigible Disaster by Letterman Games. This is a frantic, real-time, cooperative game for two to five players. It is all about a hot air balloon, and you're trying to keep it up into the sky as long as possible. I shouldn't say as long as possible. For ten rounds, that's what you have to do. Ten rounds without letting steam pressure go all the way to zero or running out of any of your supply cubes up there. So just like normal, I'm going to do this video, which will show you how to set up the game, and then I will have a playthrough video. So if you'd like to just go to the playthrough, feel free to go to the video below in this playlist. Otherwise, stay with me and let's get the game set up. So in this round, we have our status display. The first thing over here is our, st our steam pressure. If ever the steam pressure gets down to zero, we lose the game. This is going to be our tracker of rounds. Okay, we're going to try and get to 10 rounds. If we survive 10 rounds, we have won the game. If that steam pressure ever goes down to zero or we run on any of those supply piles, we lose the game. So at the beginning of each round, we're going to take all of these dice. These are called the event dice. Now, if you're playing at a uh, easy mode, you'll only use these four. So this is panic, fire, uh, guess, or people, and steam. You'll use just these four for an uh, easy game. Medium and hard, you'll add in cog, and you'll roll these dice, and depending on which numbers you roll, that's how many of the cubes you will place on the board for that round. So for example, if I rolled this three on the panic die, I would put three panic dice on, three panic dice, three panic cubes on the board. And how I'd know where to place it is I use my 12-sided dice that I have here. Okay, because the board itself has 12 areas. Now the game only comes with one 12-sided die. And if you ever do play this game, I highly suggest just putting five others in here. Because otherwise you're going to be rolling that 12-sided die a ton. Because I'd have to roll it three times for this one, five times for this one, three times for that one, blah, blah, blah. Instead, I can just roll once, three dice, then once, five dice, once, three dice. And you'll see how we set it up. The other thing that this is going to do is this is going to let us know what we have to roll on our one six-sided die in order to eliminate that threat on the hot air balloon. So if I'm trying to eliminate a panic cube, I will have to say if panic, if, it's, if I'm in the room with it, roll the die, and if I get a number equal to or less than the number that's on there, I can remove that panic die. Okay? Steam pressure. Very simple how it works. This number tells us how much steam we're going to put on the board. And then at the beginning of the round, we will decrease pressure by how much steam there is on the board. So if this was the first round and we had placed two steam cubes, we would go down to 80%. Then what we would do is wherever there is the most steam on the board, we have to place this steam pressure token. And what you have to do in this room, if you're playing on easy or medium, is you'll just place this token in a specific room, whichever one has the most steam, and if you have rooms that are tied, you get to pick, and you will take one of your turns and you'll just say pressure. And when you say pressure, you'll increase this by two. However, my wife and I are going to be playing the hard level, so we are going to play it with the flip side of that token, and that has a number four on it. That means that we have to roll a die and have it be four or under. So we're going to say pressure and then roll. If I roll under it, I can increase it by two. Okay? So that's this status display. You'll use this just to kind of track your rounds, track the steam pressure, and know how many cubes to put on the board, as well as what numbers you need to, be, need to roll in order to remove them from the board itself. So here we have the board that we're going to play on. There are three levels, one, two, and three. And what you're going to be doing, as I mentioned, is you'll roll these event dice at the beginning of the round, and that will tell you how many of specific cubes to put on the board. Now we're going to go through each one really quick so we understand them. First, panic. So panic cubes, there's the least amount of panic cubes. They're going to be purple. And if I had rolled that three, I would roll three of these 12-sided dice and then place them in the specific rooms. Now, now the, the thing about panic, if ever they're placed in a room that already has a guest, so let's say these two rooms had a guest and we placed a panic cube here, well, that means we would remove this guest cube from the game. We can never get it back. It doesn't go back to supply. And so that there's more of a chance that we'll lose by running out of the guest cubes. 
However, if there's two guest cubes in here and I place one panic cube, I only eliminate one guest. They're, they're considered injured, not eliminated, injured. Okay, so that's how panic dice work. Guess, guess are very simple. You'll roll the die, your green die, and then you'll place them on the board. And the only thing that can happen to guests is panic or if there's too much fire in a room. So if this panic had already been placed here and I place this guest, that guest is fine. It's if the guest is in this room and then I place the panic cube, then the guest is injured. Okay? We also have fire. How fire works, it's simple. You'll place five cubes into different areas based on your die roll. So let's say I rolled five. However, at the end of each round, if a room has any fire in it, that fire grows. And you'll place an additional fire token in that room. So I'll just like so. Now, if this room had had three fire at the end of the round, what happens is you will place a fourth fire, but then it spreads, and it spreads to each adjacent room. So it would go into two, and it would go into three, okay? Once again, that's a way that the fire is going to spread, and there's more chances you're going to run out of your red cubes, and if you run out, run out of your red cubes, you lose the game. So you've got to take care of your fire. This die, I think the lowest number on it is three, so that does help. So it'll be putting more fire on the board, but it'll be easier to get rid of because the, the, there's no two or one on that die. Next we have our steam. So our steam is white, so you'll have the white cubes. And as I mentioned before, you'll roll the dice just like with every all, all the other ones, the fire, the, the guess, and you'll place these on the board. And then let's say, just for an example, we have two of them in this room. Well, that's going to tell us where we need to place that steam token, or that pressure token. And in that room, that's where we can increase pressure, okay? And that room will change every round. And so you'll have to get somebody into that room and say pressure to increase the pressure on the status display. You'll also have to get rid of these steam tokens because remember, every steam token that's on the actual hot air balloon is going to decrease the steam pressure after all of the events have event cubes have been placed. Now that's all you're going to have to do if you play on the easy mode. If you play on the medium mode, you're going to add cog. Okay, cog is very simple. It's yellow, and if ever you get three in any room, you're going to remove one cog from supply and eliminate it similar to what would happen to an injured guest. So you just don't want to have three cog in a room, three or more, because if I placed another one in here, well then I'd have to remove another cog from the supply. After you roll all of these, you if you're playing at the hard mode, which my wife and I are going to, you have the lantern tokens. Now these lantern tokens have a little two on them, okay? And that two means that in that room, so for an example, let's say we put it in this room, all of the different cubes in here, you have to roll a two or less to eliminate them. Doesn't matter what's on the dice themselves. Unless the die like this cog has a one, if the, if the cog or if a die has a one on it, you'll still have to roll a one or less, so basically a one, uh, but anything else, so this fire is at a three, that you would still have to roll a two or less in order to clear one of those. Also, during your turn, you can simply just move rooms and you're not affected by any of these, these cubes. They don't prevent movement. The only thing that's gonna prevent movement is the lantern. You can move into a room with a lantern token, no problem. To move out of it, you'll actually have to roll the black die and say move and get a two or less to get out of that room. So those lanterns can be very prohibitive. <laughs> Okay. Other than that, that's really the setup of the game. You're going to be doing this and it, playing it two player. You have 45 seconds. We do, they do supply this uh, timer. I'll, however, this timer is a minute because for every other player type or uh, amount, you'll be doing a minute instead of 45 seconds. So they suggest you use an app. So I downloaded their app and that's what we're going to use for our playthrough. We're going to try and survive 10 rounds. And if we can do that, we have gone on our uh, voyage on the hot air balloon. So that's how you set up the game. Hope you guys enjoy the playthrough. Thank you.